You're listening to Out There with Jeff Rector. Jeff Rector. Welcome to Out There, the show that focuses on the genres of science fiction, fantasy, and horror on television, the big screen, the media, the internet, and everywhere else in the universe. Sit down in your favorite electric chair, pour yourself a pint of blood, and open your psychic connection because you're connected to Out There. Welcome to Out There here at my new home, UBN Go Studios. I'm with the beautiful, fabulous Naomi Grossman, of course, from American Horror Story. I love it. The studio is right next to the famous Smokehouse Restaurant, right across from Warner Brothers, where Greg Berlanti Productions is. They do all the superhero shows, The Flash, Green Arrow, <laughs> Legends of Tomorrow, all the shows we haven't worked on. Correct. I want Should to we be just on a superhero. Yes. As soon as we're done, we're going to storm the gates. We're here. Uh, I did direct a, a, a superhero film. Wow. Last summer, but we'll we'll talk about that later because we're here to talk about you. Oh, okay. Um. Just so you know, uh, folks, this is my first live on-camera show. I did 88 episodes of Out There on L.A. Talk Radio in the past, uh, and it was great, but it wasn't on camera. I kept telling the owner, Sam, we got to had all these celebrity guests. We got to have cameras. It would be great to see everybody, and uh, he wasn't ready to, to do that, but I'm here, and we're doing that at UBN Go. It's fantastic studio. We're so grateful to have my show here. This is the first one on camera, so I'm super excited. Naomi Grossman, happy Halloween. This is our Halloween and Day of the Dead show since Correct. it's uh, actually November 3rd. November 2nd. November 2nd. I'm already in the future. <laughs> I need to come back to the You're past. You're out there, Jeff Rector. I'm out there. I need to get back to the past. <laughs> come on back. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got your Day of the Dead outfit. That's yeah, cute. I'm ready. Some skulls on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Naomi, you're best known, of course, for the character Pepper on American Horror Story Asylum and American Horror Story Freak Show. Mm. You were the first character that had a crossover mm -hmm. into the two shows. That must have been cool at the time because it, it was it was unheard of, wasn't it? Right. Um, it was a first. Yeah, it was totally unprecedented. I, uh, uh, I mean... <laughs> it's funny. It, the 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 conversation changed as as uh, the negotiations went. You know, when they went to really sealing the deal, it was like, oh well, eh, she may not be Pepper, and it was like, which I, I mean, what do I know about these things? But let's face well, what it. What were you going to be, Salt? Then I mean, <laughs> no, there's what? somebody else for that. <laughs> but that was Salt was already cast. No, but if you watch the show, you'll see the first couple episodes of Freak Show. They don't actually name us. We're just ah. the the playful pinheads or something like that. Um, and even then, I remember there being a conversation in the makeup trailer with Ryan Murphy who said, so are you Pepper or... And of course, I was like, oh, let's decide this because they're about to shake my <laughs> you head. You tell and, me, you know, Ryan. You're the boss, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I, you know, I think the initial concern was that, uh, you know, they, they like their Emmys. And yeah. you know, it was a limited series at the time. And so if they have... A character coming back from a prior season does that make it no longer a limited series? But oh. um, anyway, since then it's become a it's a drama now. So what do I know? But <laughs> well, some of these shows that are clearly dramas are getting in categories for comedy and and winning some awards, and you go, what? Right. Well, what was it? Orange is the New Black that was like won all the Emmys for comedy one year, and then the next year they made it a drama and it won all the Emmys for that. So you know. They had a few more stabbings, I think, the next season. So right. it made it a drama. But, I mean, those are my favorite shows, They I'll were funny honest. stabbings, but it but was But life is a drama, a drama. Dude, let's face it, it right? So it is. Those are my favorite shows that you can't quite tell what they are. Yeah, they're, they're a mashup. Mm -hmm. So you had a shaved head as Pepper. Mm -hmm. Did they really shave your head? Or yes, was it they really did. You can watch it on YouTube. As they shaved it? Yeah, of course I'm going to shoot that. That's <laughs> who, high drama. Who wouldn't want Talk that? Talk about drama. You're going to take my hair. Absolutely. I want a record of it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I, so, I donated the locks to a child with cancer. Um, good for you. Yeah, it was wasn't great hair, so I'm, <laughs> but <laughs> some hair is better than no hair. Right, that's true. I guess you had the the nose. Yeah, it was a prosthetic nose, brow, ears. I know those weren't your eyebrows. No, definitely those not. Were, those are pretty those hideous. Those were sewed in. You know, those. somebody went in and sewed every single little hair. Wow. Mm-hmm. The wonders of modern technology. I mean, it's amazing. At work. But see, that's why they shaved my head. Because had they given me a wig cap, they would have, I mean, there. that's, you know, you've worked on Can that Can you show. imagine how many hours you would have been in that makeup chair No, they would have day. actually employed crazy. someone to sew every single bit of stubble on my head it's far cheaper to just pay me to shave my head right yeah how was that going to parties <laughs> well how was that for your dating life uh it's funny you should ask um so for asylum i they actually gave me a wig uh mostly because you know they were trying to keep this whole thing secret and right. um, they made me keep that thing so for me to go through my regular life you know, I was like a Spanish teacher on the side. And so for me to go to class and me like amo just- Jefe. <laughs> That's all I remember we, from high we, school Spanish. I, I've since retired from Spanish teaching, so I'm not going to help you. But uh, <laughs> we, we would have some work to do. Um, El Gato. <laughs> That's what I know. That's it. That's all you got. I, I go, what, what do I need to learn Spanish for? Duh, you live dummy. in Los Angeles. Yeah, I know. I Yeah. I learned that wasn't a wise mm. a wise move. In any case, it was hard for me to go back to, you know, Spanish class every day with this like little Hare Krishna, you know, yamaka of hair on my head. Little bob. You know, and and of course not have questions come up because let's face it, like what what in the world? I've had this like conservative bob my whole life and then right. one day I just decided to shave it all off with the exception of this little part, you know. There were questions. It's, it's, it's odd. There so are questions. So I, I, they gave me a wig for that first season. Uh, and yeah, I did. I found myself in a hot tub or two. You know, the guy goes for your <laughs> hair. Oh, don't touch the hair. You know, it seems like it's going so well. We're getting on so well. We're having a great time. Touch anything but the hair. Like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, there were a few dates that ended quite abruptly. Um, unfortunately, they probably, you know, I might. I might not be single now if it not had it not been for that, but but you know what, you're better off. Oh, yeah. Because if the guys are that shallow, that hair is a well, that's it, the thing. Is, is an issue. Then I learned you're too in, good for them anyway. In freak show, that's when they shaved it completely, and I think that was really just a courtesy to me because salt. Remember Salty? Right. He was an actual just bald dude. And so it wasn't really fair to me that he got to just go about his life normally. <laughs> and yeah. I had to, you know, have a shave, have this thing on my head. So they actually shaved it completely. Besides, we were in New Orleans. It was hot. Like, who so, needs hair? Who needs hair? And the fact is, you don't. Like, and guys don't care. That's what I learned. Men <laughs> don't care. Well, I did two and a half hours of prosthetic makeup for an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation, and that was only for five days for yeah. for a guest star. I cannot imagine having to go through that for multiple seasons. But, I mean, come on. I mean, you love it's it. It's what we, we love. We, I was going to say, right. I can't imagine You're not doing data entry. It, but, right. I can't imagine being a dentist. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I can't imagine a lot of things. So, yeah, can I imagine having to go to work and sitting back and closing my eyes for the first two and a half hours. Like, yeah, that sounds freaking awesome. What kind of job is that? Well, I did. Sign I love the first day. I literally, my call time was 5.30. Mm -hmm. So I'd be done by seven when everybody else was coming in. So I fell asleep and I woke up and they put a mirror in front of my face and I went, ah, because <laughs> I had no idea what the makeup's going to look like. Sure. And I, this alien staring back at me. Right. It was uh, pretty crazy. So talk about your uh, your, your mangled teeth. That um, was a mouthful. Yeah, they, it was um, some awesome looking teeth, as you know, um, <laughs> uh, which were fine until, you know, uh, later on in the season. I don't think I'm ruining anything. We're at like season 11 now. And if people haven't watched two by now, then they, I can't. They've already them. missed the boat. But <clears throat> uh, later into season two, after I've been, you know, abducted, et cetera, by aliens, I come back, you know, quote unquote fixed and I have to sound intelligent which is hard with a bunch of stuff in your mouth 
you know. So uh, e equals M C yeah, squared. Yeah, that was difficult. I yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was an acting job. I'll tell you. You also appeared as a new character, the Satanist Samantha Crow, in the eighth season Apocalypse. Mm -hmm. Ryan Murphy sure loves you. He put you to work. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> He's a great guy. I, I did uh, Feud Betty and Joan, uh, as you know, and then I got on um, uh, American Horror St Story Cult. I did an episode of that. Yep. And Ryan's so great about rehiring people that he yeah. likes. Yeah, And, you know, you don't get that a lot in the business. You jump around to different shows, but it's really nice to have somebody that, that really has your back and likes you and will... We'll, keep using him yes that's true yeah he's amazing that way i mean yeah so i feel very very blessed and then he got that big uh, netflix deal good for him Oof. Oof. Yeah, seriously oh he's on fire I he mean, deserves it i mean he's so so amazing yeah what it seems like just recently i was seeing um that he had the number one slot in both film and tv on netflix that's insane not the many people week. can say that one. Yeah, that's... I don't think anyone. That's crazy. But there aren't as many people as talented Yeah, as Ryan Murphy. Um, Naomi, you made the top five of N IMDb's top breakout stars. Yeah. After your star meter rocketed to number one? What? What? Making her the most searched in its entire eight million person database. Yeah, crazy, Number right? one. I know. I was on top of Ryan Gosling. Which is where I've always wanted <laughs> which, to be. Which is always you that's, and a million other that's women. That's the goal. That's the goal. <laughs> wow, how cool is that? It I mean, was crazy. If, if you get under 5,000 folks on IMDb, that's huge. Number one, right here in the studio. Yeah, it was wild. I remember. Did you call your mother? What about my mother? Did you call your mother? Of course. I, who didn't I tell? I'm, Mom, I'm number one. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's in a way it's dumb. You know, it's a popularity contest. Like it reminded me of being, you know, in high school and you know, being voted most whatever, you know. But this it, it That's was That's what the I got in high school, most whatever. most whatever. It was really generic. Oh, they wouldn't even give me a that. category. I was most likely to succeed, and sure enough, I I I, I am. I was the, I was number 1. Nobody else nobody from my high school. Self-fulfilling prophecy. That. Yeah, that's true. But it was fun. I remember that week or, you know, the weeks leading up. It was like it was right after the freak show premiere. I happened to wear this like basically naked dress, which you kind of have to do if you want to stand out on that red carpet. <laughs> yeah, you know, you got a bald head and a hot bod like you're going to have you're going to have to do something to stand out right. from the smallest woman in the world, the tallest woman in the world, Jessica Lang, you know. Sure. So um, but sure enough. That's that's how it you know uh, jumps up like that and um, but I remember it was right around when like Renee Zellweger was changing her face and it was like <laughs> I couldn't compete with that you know and then like somebody die and then I'm really what screwed. happened yeah yeah I thought she was pretty attractive she I, was I don't know why why they do it well yeah she put me back I would have had a higher you know my I could have gotten a number one faster had she not been, you know, messing with her face like that. Uh, oh, but is I that what she knocked you off? Yeah, nobody was she looking at me up when they're looking at her right up. Out. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Renee. <laughs> uh, you made number five of IMDb's top breakout stars. <laughs> right. So when when you jump up like that, like I went initially, I went from ninety three thousand to three thousand, like in wow. one week. That was when it's Pepper a ninety thousand dollar jump. Well, not there was no money involved, so no, no dollars. <laughs> I wish <laughs> could have used that, but yeah, I mean, that, it was a meter. It wasn't bucks. The first episode that Pepper appeared on, boom, like you know, every everybody was googling me, and that's how that works. Huffington Post, <laughs> the rap screen rant, and Sci Fi all ranked Pepper among the best A eight A H S. American Horror Story characters ever. Entertainment Weekly called you being cast in a role the best of 2012. You were riding the wave. I was. <laughs> you hope yeah. it doesn't crash when no, you're no. when you're up on top because yeah, that's a big drop. It's yeah, yeah. You did a movie called Sky Sharks. Oh, it was a, a German independent film actually. This is the description: deep in the ice of the Antarctic. 
A team of geologists uncover an old Nazi laboratory still intact where dark experiments had occurred. In order to conquer the world, the Nazis created modified sharks who were able to fly. What? Well, yeah. That was before Sharknado, <laughs> I think. But like you say, uh, Carrie, uh, Tony Todd from Candyman was in it. Mm-hmm. Carrie uh, Hiroki Tagawa. Robert Lasardo, Amanda Beers from Married with Children. That's a pretty pretty good cast for an in, for, for a German independent. For a German independent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, with flying sharks engineered by Nazis. <laughs> I'm going to see that, folks. Um, that's that's on our list to see sky sharks. You are Natalie Roquefort. Yeah. I mean, she's MTP a, News. She's a, a a newscaster, so, you know, it probably should have been you. you you're perfect at that. I, I, that's what I did on American Horror Story. I know. Story. I watched it. Um, you know, I saw early in your, your first credit was for Father Dowling Mysteries. Yes. I did an episode. My twin brother and I, we were the devil's twin hitmen. I was right. a confirmation kid. I was being confirmed. You got confirmed. I did. And that's always good. By Father Dowling himself. Folks, right here. Uh, you were a 2018 Primetime Emmy nominee for Outstanding Actress in the Short Form Comedy or Drama category for your role in the series Control Alt Delete. Mm-hmm. Congratulations! Thank That's you. huge. Yeah, Emmy baby. Yeah, nominated. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. How was that? It was fun. Um, I, uh, you know, I. Uh, the series was, um, I mean, it's, I I really just believed in it, and I, I wanted to support my friends that were creating it. It's a, a abortion comedy, and I I thought, wow. Because that's uh, comedy gold, well, as we know. No, but, I mean, just like we were talking about before, there's comedy in everything, right? right. Just the same way Cheers is like, you know, set at a bar, this is a set at an abortion clinic. Like, there's... It's a workplace comedy like any other in that regard, you know. Well, like in prison. Uh, yeah. For Orange, Orange is, the is the New Black. Right. I mean, it, it, it can be anywhere, and the strangest locations sometimes make for the best comedies. Absolutely. And in this particular case, uh, my character is kind of a, uh, a regular, if you will. Uh, abortion is basically her birth control. And... <laughs> Uh, now, don't get me wrong. There are serious parts of this story. Sure. You know, there's, um, it's all based on real women's stories. And uh, uh, the first season is different than the second. The second is literally every... I'm sorry. The first season is uh, one woman's story per episode. The second season is basically the day in the life of the... Of the um, of, of the abortion clinic. So, you know... Uh, I had more to do in season one because, you know, let's face it, in season two, there's only so many abortions you can have in a day. Um, so <laughs> you hope <laughs> I came in yeah. and I came out. But um, yeah, it was. Uh, but, you know, I really just wanted to support these friends. And, um, you know, in my mind, I thought, well, this is a show that needs to be on the air, you know. And so last thing from my mind was an Emmy. That was definitely not what I came there for. But it's cool that that that's what worked out it's sad that it didn't work out into a larger series that's that was my hope for it but you know we don't choose our paths we certainly don't <laughs> but uh hey you went in for a job mm-hmm. uh, a new experience right and you came out with an emmy nomination that's yeah, pretty great hey. you know as actors now. we go in and and, you know, I play a lot of cops. I play the hero. It's it's easy. You, you smile and look heroic. It's easy. It's the bad guys that are the fun roles. Mm, yeah. It really is. Because you get to be, you get to step outside yeah. who you are. Well, if you're not bad. If, <laughs> if you're not a killer. It's so funny. In People always say to me, oh, you were so, I love seeing you in Apocalypse. It was so nice to see you, like, you know, playing yourself finally. I was like. I stabbed a virgin. <laughs> like uh, that's not me. Like that's uh, on no what planet. Did you think that's yeah. who I am? No. Huh? <laughs> so you just came off a world win horror convention. You know, American Horror Story. All these genre credits you have. 
It's just like Star Trek. I got into all the Star Trek conventions. You get into all mm-hmm. the horror conventions, and Halloween, October, is your month. It's crazy. Talk about that. <sighs> How much traveling and and yeah. crazy fans did you come across? In October, I went. I did an event in, in Georgia, in Atlanta, then uh, Iowa, then uh, Iowa horror capital of the world. Is it? I don't know. There's nothing else. The what capital. else is going on in <laughs> Iowa? So, there, there they got to have something. Lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, then I uh, went to a, a con called T- Tiny Terror Con in North Carolina by day, and then did a you have to be a night. tiny terror? I am tiny. Get... I'm five feet of fun. Um, <laughs> and uh, no, I, I mean it was it was fun. It. it it was a it was a good con. It was not a terrible con, but uh, yeah. We're gonna talk about terrible cons. Oh, really? In a minute. Okay. Well, I actually have nothing negative to say about my my tour, other than I'm exhausted. I um from from North Carolina. It's a lot Carolina, of traveling. Yeah, I went to Ohio and shot a horror movie, um, and then from there I flew to Manchester, England, and did uh, For the Love of Horror, which was amazing. I mean, really, it was like, I've never seen so many people in my life. Like, <laughs> it was unbelievable. Um, and then from there, uh, I had a couple days to just be a, a, a tourist in England, and then I came back, and I went back to North Carolina, and uh, went to a haunted house there. Uh, called the Haunted Pyramids that was unbelievable. It was just, I mean, people p- make, th- these these haunted houses are like Broadway level oh, yeah. it's production value. It's amazing. A lot of visual effects, animatronics, yeah. they really oh, yeah. they really go all out. It's crazy. Yeah, so I just got back last night. Here I am. So out of all the conventions over all the years, mm. what was your best Experience. I mean, it depends on what you're talking about because every con has its own thing. Like most fun. Oh, most fun! I think Dragon Con in Atlanta. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. I mean, I did that years ago. That is yeah. a great con. It's, it's as popping at 4 a.m. as it is at 4 p.m. Right. Like it's it's a party, and it's it's all about costumes and I mean, you name it. Like it's. It's really, um, it's a freak show, and that's what I loved about it. Everybody stays in the same hotel. Yeah. So you go up to your room, you get another cocktail. Yeah. You go back I mean, it's, down and to the, and those, it goes 24-7. Uh-huh. It's this uh, series of hotels, really, in Atlanta that are, like, all connected, so you can technically never leave the hotel, and yet you'll be, you don't even miss it. It's almost like Vegas in that regard. Like, there's no clocks. You're just there for, you know. Skyway to Tomorrowland, to Partyland. Well, yeah, because one hotel is not going to hold everybody for these conventions. It's 20, 30, 100,000 people like Comic-Con. It gets gets crazy. But I did it years ago. And just just so you at home know how much money they bring in, Jefferson Starship, the band, played at the party, was the band – for the dance party, Jefferson you mean Starship. Jefferson Airplane. It, well, it started as Jefferson Airplane. Oh, and this then, is a comedy knockoff. Well, no, the band started as Jefferson Airplane oh, and then became I Jefferson Starship. And as as time went on, they wanted to upgrade themselves and sort of be more hip with the the today crowd. So they became Jefferson Starship. Yeah. Wild. Oh, yeah. I cool. um, <laughs> I don't know if I should say this, but um, Mickey, the lead singer, was uh, having a little doobie in the 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 back, backstage, and because I, I I was interviewing people for my science fiction news show SFN Science Fiction News, we tried to track him down. They brought me to backstage where he was, and I'm just standing there, and he's getting high with some of the the crew guys, and he looks at me and he goes. You cool? And what do you say to that? I go, yeah, uh, yeah I'm cool. <laughs> so he hands me the joint, and what are you going to do? And the lead singer of Jefferson Starship gives you a joint. So I go, 
He goes, yeah, man. So anyway, we're getting stoned. Five minutes later, the guy goes, uh, Mickey, we got to get you on stage. The show's starting. Uh. So they hustle him on stage. I'm still backstage. Uh-huh. And so they start singing. And uh, they were doing Ride the Tiger, which is one of my favorite okay. songs. And and he goes like this. And, and I'm like, who's he talking to? He goes... So he gets me up on stage, oh. and I go and I did backup singing on <laughs> "Ride the Tiger" with wow. uh, the uh, the female uh, lead singer, who was Grace Slick's. Yeah. Grace Slick was the original uh, lead singer, right. and this was her uh, niece, wow. who then took over the mantle. And I'm singing with Jefferson Stone out of my gourd, singing with <laughs> Jefferson Starship. Where do you get that? But a science fiction yes. convention. And then yes. they brought all these uh, stormtroopers and everybody in these sci-fi costumes up on stage. They're all dancing and playing the air guitar. Where else are you going to do that? Yeah, it's but true. But a science fiction convention. Yeah, I don't know Atlanta. how many times I've been it. Yeah, totally. I. It's nuts. Yeah. I remember I made out with the actor from Kids in the Hall. Gay guy, of course. Very memorable kiss. Uh, apparently. Well, so um, um, no, we, we they did a show at Dragon Con. Right. It was called uh, Four Lies and a Truth," and so we were all had to tell a story, and the audience had to decide who was lying and who was telling the truth. And oh, it fun. came down to they limited. It was just between the two of us, and we were we basically started in this like you know duel we're we're, right. we're arm wrestling and he basically like tackles me to the ground and we roll 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 and then of course it we're improvisers He's yeah a comedian like that, that's so right. obviously it ended in like you know a, a kiss um it well it had to end on a positive yeah though, of after, course if they're wrestling i mean that's how fight. all wrestling it's, should end it should it should wouldn't be big for the wwe but no, i think but well <laughs> It worked at the sci-fi it convention. Did, it did. But yeah, it's, anything it's goes. So much on fun! Stage what a what a great convention. For sure. Mm-hmm. Worst convention. Oh. Worst experience. I couldn't, I couldn't. Well, I did go to a con once where the we won't name names. Uh, the promoter basically feigned uh, having been. Uh, uh, burglarized in the night and you know somebody came in and <laughs> took drama. all my money and and so basically he <laughs> the guests all left with our you know tails between our legs like i flew all the way to virginia only to be because he and, went bankrupt yeah, or whatever he didn't have the fame. money to pay us he paid the bigger and stronger and more male you were uh the you know, the more likely that you got something. Right. I am none of those things, and so you I got, got bub nothing. Kiss. Yeah. I did one in Las Vegas, and he flies us in. I I got a couple of director friends of mine to sign on that had never done these. I go, you gotta come to Vegas. This is great. Yeah. So I talked him into it, and we get there. I don't remember what hotel it was, um, but uh, it was dead. Oh. Both days, and you're sitting That's there the going, worst. twiddling your thumbs. But you know what? I have more fun running around and talking to the other celebrities and and just hanging out, right? So I was I was having a ball, but uh, but that was the that was Saturday, right? Mm. Saturday night, some of the the other guests go to their room, and the key didn't oh, work. That's the worst. <laughs> they go down to the front desk. They go, the key's not working to my room. And they said, oh, yes, we're sorry. That, that bill hasn't been paid. So they go, screw this. You know, and they jumped on a plane. It's only an hour. They jumped yeah. on a plane back to L.A. Uh-huh. I was, uh, I guess I had a better relationship than most of them because my key, key worked. And I didn't know any of this till the next day. So we get there the next day. Again, it's, uh, it's dead. He had some Cirque du Soleil performers come in and perform, which was kind of cool. But, Mm -hmm. you know, we're like, God, this guy's going to lose his ass. Yeah. So on the second day, we see these two guys come in in dark suits that didn't look like friendly guys. No. And they go up and they start talking to him and the, the he just turned white as a ghost. And then they left. Mm hmm. And um 
Nobody ever heard from him. Wow. Ever again. It and this was, was it up was north, crazy. No, this was in Las Vegas. Oh. So Scott Thompson like, is the name of the kids in the hall, by the way. Just so people don't, don't borrow think. money if you can't pay it back, folks. I guess that's the. Yeah, I mean, I've heard this That's story. That's the moral before. of the Not story. Not from Las Vegas, but I know of these. And actually, while I've never had my uh, key stop working, I have come home to a ginormous bill that the you know promoter decided not to pay, so they charged oh, no. the guests for you know incidentals, which were the room. <laughs> Uh, it was a very expensive room that I never would have, you know. This agreed is several to. hundred dollars. I, I didn't have any of the uh, the the. Yeah, I had some checks. The liquor mixed. and like, the what is no, that? no. Ugh. Your room was the incidental. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, it ha- what? That happens. Uh, I mean, I, in it's a, a way, crazy world we live in, folks. I mean, we're lucky it doesn't happen more. Honestly, it. Listen. Everybody think you know. There's big, big money in these conventions, <laughs> hundreds of thousands of dollars. <coughs> but if you don't know what you're doing, you know, everybody yeah. says, "Oh, wow, I'll get these guests, and they'll bring in people, and we'll sell tickets." There's no guarantees, and if you don't know what you're doing, and the problem is the promotion, they don't promote it right. You don't know. And it's a like, bust. How was I to know that this thing in Manchester, England, was going to be unbelievable? Like it was. It was incredible and then there's other things where you know like i said i don't want to name names but you know then there's other cons where you're like wow i can't believe i got out of bed for this you know it's true how do you know i live in la i could have stayed home at the beach yes absolutely naomi you graduated in theater from northwestern university Mm -hmm. former member of the groundlings sunday company Mm mm-hmm was there a Saturday company? Yeah, there is. The, the main company is Saturday is, and, well, all the other days of the week. Sunday is, you know, I don't want to say pyramid scheme because it sounds like it's <laughs> not, you know, it's they're pulling one over on people and it's Wasn't not it? that. No, but, you know, at the, at the beginning when you start at the Groundlings, it, everybody's at the bottom of the pyramid, right? Right. And you just keep going up and up and up and up. And Sunday is the farthest you can go before you become a main company member so you know i can't boast being a groundling quote unquote but i was you know i was in the sunday company i was i got really that's close. a groundling ish i did i was with the la connection okay for many years and and the groundling says a great reputation but the problem is and i think they tell you up front you're not going to get to perform in a group Unless somebody dies, I mean, there's well, yeah, I mean, people, you don't get into the classes and then get into forever. If I, you know, if I wanted to be an astronaut, that would have probably been a faster trajectory. (laughs) It's true. You'd be on Mars by now. Oh yeah, for sure. Before you got into the Saturday group. Yeah. You went to college with Bruno Campus and Seth Meyers. Yeah, Seth was a year ahead of me. Uh. Uh, uh, Josh Myers, his younger brother, was uh, a year behind me, so I'm kind of a Myers sandwich. Um, when when uh, Jessica Lang was on uh, Seth Meyers' show, uh, it's fun. She, you know how he starts, the lights up. Oh, Jessica, so right. great to have you. You know my uh, co- college buddy was uh, is a cast member of yours. Just. Oh, who's that? And then, so literally the first 30 seconds of her entire, you know, night tonight show gig was talking about me. And uh, it was uh, awesome. Like, I, I just know, like, I drop Seth's name. Last thing I ever expected was to see him dropping mine. Right. Uh, which was really lovely. You I don't can't know pay that for that knows. kind of publicity. No, you can't. I don't know that anyone knows Bruno anymore. But, you know, he was the boyfriend in Jesse. That show right. um, with uh, Alicia Silverstone, and uh, yeah, he was also uh, well. He was on Nip Tuck, another Ryan right? Murphy show. Did, I think did, I looked at his he's IMDb. Not really he's not an done a actor much anymore, but um, but I understand you learned to speak Portuguese <laughs> because you were in love with him. Well, yeah. I mean, in love. I was in lust. I had a huge crush on this guy. First of all, I lived in Argentina in high school, so I already spoke Spanish. Oh, you Portuguese did? Portuguese was like an easy A. Right. Plus, there was a bunch of hot, you know, um, uh, 
Argentinian guys? We, yeah, basically. <laughs> uh, mostly, you know, Kellogg Business School guys who'd already conquered Latin America right. and they just needed to finish off with Brazil. So um, the class demographics was quite favorable for a, you know, um, uh, single lady like myself um and yeah like yeah i definitely i had a huge crush on bruno and i that was my thought i thought he would be my uh you know he would tutor me we'd fall in love we'd have a bunch of brazilian babies and none of that happened but nothing happened and none he of didn't that even happened. know I, that you existed i don't think so though i do <laughs> know portuguese to this day i go to comic cons in brazil and i can damn he, you bruno I can do entire Q and A's just brother. like this in Portuguese, and Brazilians can't get enough of it. They're like, "Who is this? How does this American <laughs> woman know our language?" So, works out. That's got to be cool. Have you done? Believe any? me, I've had plenty. My heart broken several times, and we all have. never gotten anything this positive out of it. The fact yeah. that I I have a foreign <laughs> language under my belt, I've got a whole special skill to to show for it. Hey, do you ever go to Venezuela? Are you a big star down there? Uh, Venezuela is the only country in South America I've never been to, actually. But I've been everywhere That's crazy. Else. Well, add that to your bucket list. I, I suppose. It's had some hard times lately, so it wasn't um, top of the list, but hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, take a look at this promo for SFN Science Fiction News, and we'll be right back. And we're back with Out There with Jeff Rector and Naomi Grossman. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, obviously, you know her from American Horror Story and a million other uh, genre shows. Naomi, what's what's coming up? What can you talk about? Um, well, I just did a, a show for Netflix. Uh, I think I can talk about it. It's called Obliterated. And it's, um, it's produced by the same people as Cobra Kai. Nice. Um, it, it'll come out in uh, the new year. So... Uh, we got to wait a little bit, but um, I have a small role, but it, you cannot miss it. That's kind of what I do, if you noticed. I don't, I've never gotten yeah, like don't a Don't you big miss me kind red, of a girl. But you, you do not miss me. This is, <laughs> I'm, it's pretty outrageous. Do you get obliterated? I obliterate. You're the obliterator. Yeah, I do. That's some even better. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. Wow. Um, also, Naomi Grossman, the obliterator, <laughs> coming soon to Netflix. Pretty much. Her name's Janet, but yeah, obliterator. Janet, <laughs> the obliterator. Um, Who else is in it? Uh, Nick Zano is the. Um, he's the lead. He's gorgeous. I mean, that helps. Yeah, when you're the lead of a show. Yeah. Yeah, especially for me. Again, once you see my role, <laughs> it definitely helps. Um, uh, what else? Well, I also Stuff have coming out? my own show. What's that? American Horror Story, W-H-O-R-E, which um, <laughs> it's a... That's the scariest of them all, isn't it? <laughs> it's, a, it's a comedy, obviously. Gosh, obviously. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, autobiographical. Um, it's a, you know, it's my story. It's my horror story. Um, and I'm American. What can Did I say? Did you write, direct it, I wrote produce it. it? I am it's... not. I have a director. Uh, I am producing. Uh, it's it's a live show. Uh, oh, great. Yep. So you'll be able to come to come see it in L.A. And then we'll go to New York, do it there. Um, the hope is of course that we'll you know capture it and sell it to a Netflix or Hulu or whatever and you know the whole world will be able to see it. So, um, but we haven't gotten there yet. Is that kind of like Amy Schumer's show? Inside that's of a, the, yeah. yeah, it's like about her and her adventures and her past and who she is. Uh, I haven't seen that show, so I, I'm reluctant to answer I that. I haven't either. But, but I will say, you know, if anybody knows or loves John Leguizamo or Mike Birbiglia, like it's right. that. It's it's, it's more a one woman show. It's, kind yeah, of. it's a solo show, and it's a little more theatrical than stand up. 
Um, but it is primarily comedic. Um, you know, a little dramedy. There's got to be a little drama in there. Yeah. I did my first uh, solo show, actually, last year. Oh, cool. Uh, it was called Who is Jeff Rector? Okay. We live streamed it. Now I've taken that and I've gone into the editing booth and I've added pictures and uh, I've embellished it a little bit. So I'm going to re-release that. Awesome. Real That's soon. That's great. So, I had no idea. Yeah. Cool. Nobody does. That's right. That's very exciting. But uh, I'll invite you because we're going to have a screening of it. A yeah. screening of it and a party. And, oh, cool. Um, you know, uh, for any actor that has, has stories to tell and, and has a life of experience as we do, you know, I think it's a no-brainer. I mean, you know, when I, in 2000, I started writing, directing, and producing my own stuff, I wanted to tell my own stories. Mm -hmm. At some point, the acting's great, but we really need to take the reins, right? Yeah. And do it ourselves. And I, that's super exciting. I mean, it's this is my third. This is a trilogy. Oh, is it really? Yeah, yeah. I have two prior. One is called Girl in Argentine Landscape, and it's my sort of coming-of-age story in Argentina. Um, how I learned Hopefully Spanish. it's in English. Uh, it is in English, oh, okay. although I did. Uh, have, I have a subtitled version, which I actually took to Argentina and, and rented out some movie theaters and put it up there. Um, so it, they know about it there too, um, and then of course I have my second. It's called Carnival Knowledge. It's uh, <laughs> it's kind of a comic Colonel romp. I um, love it. Yeah, it's sort of my dating Carnival misadventures knowledge. in LA, and now this one. This is a. A little more mature. It's it's um it's definitely a love letter to fans. It's a it's uh I'm definitely tipping my hat to American Horror Story, obviously with the name. Right. But um you know it's it's my story. It's pre Pepper, post Pepper, becoming Pepper. It's all the things that they queue up at these Comic Cons to hear. Only it's curated, right? I've really right. thought through every moment. I've labored over ah uh, the ah uh, the, you know. Well, it's your show, and everything's got to be poignant, and oh, yeah. you know, you don't get the the same old questions about, oh, what was it like to play this person or that person, and you're you're no, you're driving the narrative. <coughs> That's right. And I've thought through every single millisecond, so I'm really excited. Well, what's funny about re-editing and going through and tightening up my show? It's about sixty minutes. That's a lot of time to be on stage talking yeah. by yourself. Yeah. It really is. And even in that, I go, well, we can tighten it a little here. We can nip tuck it. And, yeah, yeah. And um, we added some images, and it really, really moves and really oh, cool. flows. And, and as you know, as actors, nothing is better than the live performance yeah. in front of the audience. I know. You know, TV and film is great. But we started in theater and sure. that live response or, you know, I do stand up comedy as well. That immediate risk. You, you cannot beat that feeling. Correct. Yeah. 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 I mean, if I mean, I love theater, but, you know, I also there's no money in it. There's no that's money the, in it. So that's the downside. What you going to do? It's great. Except for the money. Yeah. So we do TV and film, which which is great because we you only have to do it once, That's and then right. it's captured forever. Yeah. Instead of a play where you have to do it night after night, but there's a thrill there is. in that as well. We are lucky though that we're living in a time when these you know solo shows are are streaming. You know, right. like you said, like you can watch. Now I can put it up on my website, and it's it's yeah, open for the, for the whole Yeah, but once upon a time that was like why. Well, you Right. Theater on video, like, pff, why? But now, I mean, after the, I think the pandemic changed everything in that regard. It, it, yeah, it did, because people are at home and they're comfortable there. Yeah. And they can see whatever they want. You know, even major motion pictures now Aren't are going to the theaters release. and they're streaming the next day. So yeah. I think I'll wait and just watch it at home. Yeah. Well, and I think good storytelling is good storytelling. You don't need, you know, car crashes and sex scenes. I mean. Well, you do. I mean. But. <laughs> personally, I need a sex scene. Every oh, right. I'm then. a guy. That's but, the. I'm, I'm not so saying, much into the like, chick flicks. Good, but, good, no, yeah. but good storytelling. Good storytelling well, is good storytelling. Yeah, I think so. 
Absolutely. So how can the fans find you? Well, I'm at Naomi W. Grossman across all platforms. Oh, except TikTok. There's no W in the TikTok. But, yeah. Or, of course, my website's NaomiGrossman.net. So... Yeah, I'm pretty you're accessible. TikTok. You're pretty accessible. You're all yeah, over the place. Yeah, there's a blue check mark. You'll know it's me. Yeah, and I am. Who I'm, can forget I'm, this I'm beautiful in. face? Oh. <laughs> Talented okay. face. Okay. We're both members of the TV Academy. We are. I would encourage any actors or actresses out there, working actors that have uh, television credits, to apply because it's an amazing experience. When the Emmys come around, there's all the FYC events for your consideration. We're voting Emmy members. Yeah. There's a separate uh, film society where you pay a little extra money and you get first run private screenings at the at the beautiful theater. It's great. Right? Yeah, I the love Q&As, it. The Q&As, networking. Oh, it's so fun. Yeah, yeah. You get fed. Get fed? I mean, no, it checks all the boxes. You, Yeah, like you Some said. Some drinks. I got to eat anyway. Networking. And I can be social. <laughs> and I, I need to be, I need to know what's on television. Right. Well, it's so uh, important for us when we're doing these roles yeah. to do the research. Sure. And know what the flavor is. These actors go, oh, uh, I'm reading for uh, True Blood or I'm reading, boy, did I just date myself. I'm reading for uh, American Horror Stories. You know, I go, oh, have you ever seen it? They go, no. What? Yeah. I mean, you've got to watch the shows, right? Right. For the actors to know what the tempo was, what, what the feel and tone of the show is. Of course. Because they're all different. Right. And a lot of actors don't get that. They go, oh, yeah, I got this. Do you? Mm, probably not. <laughs> if you've never seen those shows. No. By the way, you've so. already outed us as being on Father Dowling, so I don't think True Blood's going <laughs> to date you. <laughs> Just I saying. Guess, I guess not. <laughs> uh, one last comment to the fans out there. What would you like to tell the fans out there? Oh, um, uh, no, I just would thank them. I mean, what would we be without fans, right? That's right. I mean, let's face it. I... Um, We'd be acting in a void, like it's a, it's a, it's a conversation, it's a, it's a dialogue, right? I can act my pants off, but if no one's there to see it, like, what does it matter? Like, it's, you know, a tree falls in a forest, and if it, if no one's there to hear it, did it fall? Like, I, I feel like this is a, a, a dance, and um, thank you for letting, for dancing with me. Well, thank you very much. I always like to say, you can do and be anything you want in this world. Don't let anybody tell you you can't. Jeff Rector, Naomi Grossman, that's it for Out There. We'll see you next time.